Well, hello. It is August 25th, 2022, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello, and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. Uh, Today, uh, I'd like you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Romans. We're going to look at a verse in Romans chapter 14, but before we get there, uh, let me just share a little bit about Paul's writing in his letters. Typically, uh, in his his letters, he will uh, begin with his greeting. Uh, he'll then share how he's praying for the church or people that he's writing to. He'll address the issue or the problem uh, that he's wanting to address. Uh, and then he'll close out uh, the letter, usually with some practical application of what should our lives look like in light of whatever this doctrine or this issue is that he's dealing with. And in Romans, uh, he's dealing with quite a bit. Romans is the Pauline uh, encyclopedia of his explanation of salvation in, in all that is involved therein. And what and he begins toward the end of the book, uh, in first chapter 14, and for instance, dealing with some of the practical applications. Uh, in chapter 13, uh, he deals with um, uh, <clears throat> our lives in submission to authorities. And in 14, he's dealing with uh, uh, judgment in our daily walk and uh, how our lives can either cause folks to stumble or cause folks to stand. And 15 gives the example of Christ for us to live by. And I want to look at a verse uh, in uh, chapter 14 where he's dealing with uh, an issue I think is relevant today, and that is uh, our living with our views and how we live from day to day and, and what we think and how even within Christianity we can have differing views on things, uh, but how do we deal with those folks within the church? How do we deal with those folks within the faith that that differ with us on, on, on issues? And uh, Verse 8, he makes this statement. For if we live, we live to to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. And amen. Well, again, in this chapter, in chapter 14, he's speaking of judgments and judgments that we make, oftentimes even within the church, about others within the church, uh, with something going on or something they do or something they think that is different than us. And, and uh, we make a judgment as to whether they are or are not a believer and are in the faith because of that. And Paul's writing and saying, wait a minute, while one may see things one way and one may see things the other way, the key for us to think about is, are we honoring the Lord? Now, that's not to say we're to condone sin. Paul is not at all saying that, and neither am I. We're not to condone sin, but we're to realize that Even within the carrying out of our daily life, our our practice as believers, there are areas that we will differ in. Some of them are going to be minor, and there's no reason to squabble over them. Uh, You know, for instance, in one church, the offering may be taken like ours with the basket. Uh, Others may have a drop box. Uh, Differing ways, but not conflicting or uh, with the the walk with our walk with the Lord at all. The key for us to remember is. If we live, we're to live for the Lord, for God's glory. And if we die, as believers, we die for God's glory. For God is the Lord over us in life and in death. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, Christ is the Lord. And and that is key and central for us to remember when we're finding these difficulties, these differences in our walks, the the ways we do things. Uh, You know, uh, another for instance, I prefer to have my devotional quiet time first thing in the morning when I wake up. My wife prefers to have hers in the evening before she goes to sleep. There are differing ways of doing it, and and, uh, it would be easy for either one of us to judge the other one because they're not doing things the way I do them. But the Lord is the Lord over both of us, whether living or whether in death. He is is the the Lord of... Uh, over us, the guide over us, the director over us, the the commander over us. He is the ruler over our life. 
and we should be seeking to glorify him. If we're glorifying him in the morning, praise the Lord. If we're glorifying him in the evening, praise the Lord. But at all times, we should be seeking to glorify him. Are you seeing God as the Lord in your life, in every aspect of your life, at work or at home, wherever you may be? Is he the Lord? Thomas Watson, in his book, The, the Lord's Prayer, writes this. A true saint ambitiously endeavors to advance the name of God and everything he asks. Will this tend to the honor of God's name? This was Paul's chief design, Philippians 1.20. A godly man thinks it scarce worth, his, scarce worth his while to live if he may not bring some revenue of honor to God's name. Consider how his name is dishonored in the world. It is like the sun in an eclipse. Theodosius uh, took it as a heinous crime when they threw dirt upon his statue. What is far worse is the disgrace that is thrown upon the glorious name of Jehovah. It will be a great comfort to us when we come to die if we have hallowed God's name in our life, if we have loved him with our hearts, praised him with our lips, and honored him with our lives. As the hour of death, At the hour of death, all your earthly comforts will vanish, and thinking of riches or pleasures you have enjoyed will not give you one ounce of comfort. Ah, but to have a conscience witnessing that you have hallowed God's name, what a sweet peace and satisfaction this will give. How happy is that servant that receives his pay in the evening after working all day. How sweet will death be when they they who have spent their lives honoring God shall receive their reward. If we bring honor to his name, he will honor us. He will esteem us as the cream and flower of creation. How renowned are those who have hallowed his name. Abraham for his faith. Moses for his meekness. David for his zeal. Paul for his love to Christ. Their names are sweet perfume in God's church to this day. At death he will send his angels to carry us up with triumph in the heaven. Who then would not hallow and glorify his name and spread his renown in the world, since he will put such immortal honor upon his people? 1 Corinthians 2.9 Amen. And amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. And just taking a few minutes to think about where is our focus? Who are we seeking to glorify? Ourselves or the Lord? He is the Lord over life and death, and we should seek to glorify him. Let's close our time in prayer. Father, I thank you for your salvation, your grace, and your mercy. I pray that you'd be at work in our lives today, and Lord, that you would uh, be glorified in us. I pray, Father, that you would be lifted up in me and in others today, that we would lift up your name and exalt you, that we would be bold in our witness and faithful in our walk. Give us your strength, your peace in your comfort. Guide us and direct us according to your will and for your glory, that when all is said and done, we will hear those beloved words, well done, good and faithful servant, not for our sake, but for your sake, your grace and your mercy, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we gather together for some thoughts from the Word.